Hey Masters, listen, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending time here. I mean, there's a lot of things you could be doing with your time, yet you're here with my guests and with me and supporting the show. And our goal is just to bring massive, massive amounts of value to you, value that you can use in your business, value that you can use in your life, value to use everywhere. So that's our intention. Again, I just want to say thank you. I don't know if I do it enough. And listen, just really, really appreciate you. And if no one else has told you this today, you rock. Hope you enjoy today's episode. Hey, what's up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And today we are, uh, we're, I don't know, what are we, privileged? Are we excited? Are we just, uh, this is just a great opportunity to talk to somebody that's going to help us stay motivated uh, in the midst of all the, the, the stuff going on right now, right? I, I hate to say crisis. I, I hear that word so much, yeah. but there's just a lot going on. So, hey, Tasha Smith, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, David, for having me. I'm I am excited. Yeah, and me too. Well. Me too. And I and I, anything that has to do with staying motivated, I think that's uh, something good for for me and for for our listeners. You know, because this these can be some pressing uh, times, right? I know me. I've personally been in the house for, geez, I think going on like thirty five days now, or maybe forty days. So yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty pretty interesting. Um, so you uh, own a company and it's uh, Emerge. Um, yep, Emerge Sales Training. We Emerge coach sales training. Yep. Okay, and, and I'm sorry, what do you do? We we coach entrepreneurs on their sales processes. Okay, um, kind of beginning to end and leadership processes if that applies uh, to their business. Uh, so basically, all things sales for entrepreneurs. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I get a lot of requests uh, for for guests and I in a lot, and I unfortunately don't, aren't able to accept all of them. But I saw yours, and and I saw that. I think that was what caught my attention was the the part about motivation and uh, and sales training because we have a lot of salespeople that listen to this podcast. So definitely awesome. appreciate you and looking forward to getting some some great nuggets from you today. Awesome. Thank I'm you. glad to give up. Let me know what, how does how do you want me to start. All right. So what, but before we even get started, let me just uh, thank our, our sponsors because Vulcan 7 is a tremendous product and they've been supporting us for a couple years. And, you know, for you salespeople that are kind of stuck in the house right now, why not use Vulcan 7's system to, to get in touch with for sale by owners, with expireds, with people in your database? You can just pull everybody in there. You can dial them. You can leave messages. You can add them to CRM, you can do follow-up. So everything's there in one place for you. So you get to try out their product right now as, as, a, as a listener of Path to Mastery. Try out the whole service for just $49 for a month and see if you love it. If you love it, you stick with it. If you don't, you can move on. All right. And then finally, davidsfreebook.com. We're spending a lot of time right now indoors and other things. So why not listen to a free audible, right? So you can get a free audio book uh, going to davidsfreebook.com. So check out those things. And now back to Tasha. What's up, Tasha? Awesome. Man, I feel like I've been doing so, so many like sit-ups and push-ups and, and air squats and burpees and all this <laughs> stuff today. And, uh, and I feel like I'm still out of breath, man. So that's how I try to stay motivated. So let us, yeah, why don't you good. share well, with us? State. I'm sorry. What were you uh, say? That's a great pot for positive mental state, right? Uh, yeah. I, I, exercise for me is, is really critical. If I don't exercise... Um, I feel off, you know, it's, it's, I've been, I, I'm, I just turned 50 and I've been, I started at 17 and I've never stopped like legitimate, like 33 years of just awesome. every day pretty much. So yeah. All right. Anyway, enough about me. You're here. You're the guest. We should be talking about you. So tell us, what do you, what do you do and why should, why should our listeners be uh, listening to you? Okay. So what, uh, what I do is I work with people on their, like I said, her, their sales processes. But what we need to look at is entrepreneurs, right? And I think I would certainly classify, right, salespeople as entrepreneurs. They operate like, well, when they operate as entrepreneurs, they do better. Uh, in the real estate industry, also clearly, right, is an entrepreneurial. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. What would you say is the difference between a, a salesperson and an entrepreneur? Or is there a difference? Oh, I, I have a lot of opinions on this. Okay. Um, I, did a, I did a video for my group yesterday on this. And so an entrepreneur is someone who takes on abnormal risk 
to um, build and operate an enterprise. So the difference is, I think, it's the difference between creating and consuming. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of our clients are, to, to really make this clear, a lot of our clients are in the network marketing industry. So they, you know, are in a company, right? Shakes, essential oils, CBD, whatever. Sure. And there's two types of people that live in those spaces. There are the ones that are follow the leader. And there are the ones that are blowing stuff up and creating a path. Mm. And I would say that, I mean, the entrepreneurs still take others' wisdom, right? They're not going to just be rogue. But what they're doing is they're looking for a better way to deliver products. So all business, I think, comes down to, David, is you find problems, right? You solve them, and then you get paid, which is understanding that concept is really important for motivation and really important right now is yeah. that you're look because if we focus internally, we're going to get stressed really, really quickly. We're going to start asking questions like, where's my business going to be in, in 90 days and all that stuff. But if we focus on purpose, right. And this idea of, I am a problem solver, we start to get creative about how we provide solutions to people right? That's the way entrepreneurs think, right? They're owning and operating and they're taking risks and they're trying new things. They're creator types. And I, yeah. I believe we were all born to create. One of the first things our kids say when they're potty well, training uh, is... So you did say something and uh, you said a few things that are good. I, I'm curious with the entrepreneur, like I think a lot of entrepreneurs, like you said earlier, that they will take advice or they'll, they'll seek mm -hmm. advice. Um, is, do, is that... Because I know a lot of entrepreneurs that don't do that. Like they, they're going to try to figure things out on their own and they're going to do things a certain way instead of maybe following a proven model that went before them. So they're actually not going to reach that, that level of achievement where if they would have followed a model or they would have followed, they, they probably would be further along. Is that, is that true as well? Or? No, ab absolutely. Right. There's, there's foolish entrepreneurship and wisdom entrepreneurship. Okay, for good. Sure. So thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the salesperson, I think, cause I've worked in corporate, right. Mm. And I've worked in this other world, which is this really interesting mix. I have clients that are in financial services, uh, selling insurance and it's, it's similar. So the, the salesperson is, if they're not operating with an entrepreneurial mindset, they're typically like, okay, sales manager, where are my leads? Mm. I don't have enough leads to be successful. I don't, um, I, where's my training? Like I rely on you to give me the wisdom and you better give me, you need to give me a path, right? The people that are successful in sales treat their goals as if it is their own business that they're creating from scratch. So even when I worked in corporate America, because my, background before that in my 20s i used to sell knives uh, there's always a good joke Cutco. yeah Cutco Cut, knives Cut Cut you guys probably know that's just a guess friends, yeah, actually. They, sure, they work with yep. yeah so um great knife by the way i still have them in my kitchen I, i've had those at least 10 years now it's yeah my favorite knives i use them like <laughs> this is not a commercial for Cutco either but yeah <laughs> there's, there's like three knives and those are the only ones i ever use it's great <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're amazing. And so we worked off referrals only. Um, and so when I walked into corporate America, I was like, you give leads? That's weird. My referrals are going to be much more reliable than your leads. Mm. Right? Because I was born in an entrepreneurial environment. And like taking that attitude toward, okay, what are all the problems? And where are my people? And how do I find my people? And how do I solve their problems? I think is an entrepreneurial mindset where people that I think struggle in sales are looking, asking the question, how do I sell my product? Yeah. So or it's the difference between like if, if you're, if someone's on my, on a team, mm -hmm. you want them to be coming to you and saying, Hey, um, this is where, I, where, where we're going. I, you know, show me the direction. How do I get there? What do mm -hmm. I need to do? Right. Not so, so much like, well, actually maybe, maybe I'm saying it wrong. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, so I, I, Gary Keller, who I was fortunate to be in his mastermind for years, said yeah. that you want people that are bringing you, like pushing you, 
Like, hey, yeah. why aren't we here? Where are we going? What we should be here by now? Why are we not people that are always coming to you like, hey, I can't. How come these leads suck? Or similar to what you said, right? Is that is that accurate yeah. or? So that would is be that part of motivation too. Well, yeah. So um, I'm kind of a behavioral psychology nerd. And uh, one of my favorite authors is Daniel Pink. And so this is not my mm. research, it's his. And so what's the core of motivation? So there's three things. It's purpose, uh, being connected to a greater cause. Number two is autonomy, which is independence. I want to be the master of my own destiny. This is where financial motivation comes in. We don't want the money. We want the freedom that comes with the money, right? Mm, yeah. And mastery is we want to be able to see ourselves getting better and better and better. So purpose, autonomy, and mastery. Uh, skill development, right? I don't want to go dancing. I live in uh, close to LA. I don't want to go dancing because I can't even clap to a song in church. But if you told me, oh, there's a hockey tournament, I'm an athlete, right? That's something I can see myself being good at. I'm going to be more motivated to get my booty to LA at 11 o'clock at night than I would if you said, let's go out dancing. Like, no, I'm a responsible mother and business owner. I can't be out that late. Sure. Right. So motivation also has to do with this concept of hope. But what I really want to talk about today, especially in the midst of the world that we're living in right now, yes. is purpose. Right. So this idea of being driven by what are my problems that I'm solving? What problems do I see in the world and how do I provide solutions to that is what is going to help keep us motivated. Uh, one of the things that helps me the most and I just think this is so important for everyone right now. My coach makes me keep what's called an impact journal. And it's directly tied to these motivational drivers that we have from a psychological perspective. And so what, what, what I have to do is I have to write down three humans that I positively impacted with my business each day. That's like awesome. the actual names and how I positively impacted. So hopefully I could put David Hill on my... Like, hopefully you find something today that is encouraging I, to you. I've already found something. So thank you for that. Yes. You're welcome. So I can put David Hill on my impact journal. And if I can stack three humans that I impact per day over the course of a year, that's a thousand impacts. Mm. My business will grow, but we end up with these goals that are so big, right? Maybe they're big income goals or, you know, with, with homes, right? Long sales cycle. And we can get discouraged really, really quickly thinking, well, what's the point? Burnout comes from working hard and not seeing an impact. It's not from working hard. We can work hard if we see impacts. We're not burnt out. It's yeah. when we don't see an impact. And so by, there's a, gr a great quote. I don't know who says it. Um, we have a tendency to remember what we should forget and forget what we should remember. So we remember all the things that didn't impact. But what if we just kept a journal and we wrote down, David Hill, right? My client this morning helped her figure out what her core values were, right? You know, these 10 people I met with have hope for their social media strategy now that they're in an online space, mm. right? I can, now I'm, I'm, I'm motivated because I've connected with my purpose, solving problems and contributing to the greater good. Um, I got to choose how I did that right? I had some freedom in what the impacts sure. look like. I didn't have to report to someone and say, they're like, did you impact these three people today? Right? It could be any three people. And then mastery, well, I start to see that change. When I first started as a coach four years ago, it was my neighbor made a sale. <laughs> well, now it's, yeah. right, this person just created a company-wide training program. It, the impacts change. And so you end up having a journal that tracks your mastery and tracks your skill development in a much different way. And so you are constantly connected to purpose, autonomy, and mastery through, I mean, I just have, I use a planner pad and at the top I could just do that or five minute journal app is amazing. Mm, and it yeah, just says what will make today great. And at the end, like I what know, awesome things happen. Strong. I don't know if you can even see that. So Brendan Bouchard, the Brendan okay. Bouchard planner. It's cool. I, I, Every day you have questions. You do it in the morning. It takes about maybe 10 minutes in the morning. And then basically you, you, you plan out your day in the morning with your intentions. And then at the end of the day, you look at your day and say, okay, did I 
hit those intentions. I fulfilled it. I do everything in my power to achieve that. And it's, it's, it's awesome. It creates a lot of clarity. Um, I, I want to shift gears in a minute and I really want to talk about motivation and how people are going to stay motivated. Um, and, and I think this is related to the question I'm about to ask you, but I see, I brought in a lot of new salespeople in, in, in the majority of them, uh, aren't going to succeed because they're going to, they're going to get to that place where, wow, this is a lot more challenging than I thought. I'm putting in a lot of effort, yet I'm not getting the result back. And mm-hmm. and it seems like most of them are going to, are going to give up right before, like if they would have just showed up one more day and put in that mm-hmm. one more, you know, ever read that book, three feet from gold. You know I what I'm talking read it, about? But I know what you're talking it's, about. Yeah. It, you know, the, the, the philosophy behind it. It's, yeah. I see so much of that, right? How does is that like? How does somebody? I don't. I don't. Is there a way somebody can get through that? Because you're in it, and we're kind yeah. of in it now, right? Like with everything happening, our business has slowed down tremendously. Like most, I, I'm yeah. guessing most business, but in real estate, people are taking their houses off the market. Buyers decided not to sell. Financing's falling apart. Banks aren't giving loans. Appraisers aren't showing up now. We heard I had a situation today. The appraiser's not going to go until May. The house was supposed to close the end of April. It just keeps coming and coming. So how do people in the midst of all that keep showing up every day? Well, that, that is like an 15 awesome question. questions in one, my apologies. That's, no, it's good. good. Well, I'm glad you can put it together. Thank you. I, I got it. Yeah. Um, so my business coach, uh, her mom and sister are in the real estate business. And we had this conversation about two weeks ago. And it's so much, I mean, I just love that, like, you are good at names. My names are terrible. Like, my courses are called things like your social media engagement foundation. Horrible. Path to Mastery, how to stay relevant. It's beautiful. And so the question it comes down to is, first, why are you in real estate? What's your mission? My mom attempted real estate for five minutes because she loves home decor and you can make money. Well, I guess how long my mom life. lasted? She did not have a greater purpose, right? And so I think you have to, it, what helps to know is what is your greater overarching purpose? And helping people get in homes is a tool to achieve your greatest purpose. That's how we get, you know, keep motivated. So for me, my greatest purpose is if you need to be able to sell to feed your family, my company will find a way to help you. And so at first it was one-on-one coaching, then it became online courses, then it became social media coaching, then it was like, okay, well, can we specialize in this area? And those are all tools, right? My mission isn't one-on-one coaching products. My mission isn't speaking events. So when my speaking events got canceled, it was not that big of a deal because my mission was to help people to sell, period, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to support their families. And so if you can ask yourself that question, why a few times, like, why do you care so much about selling houses and you can find that mission, then that's going to help you to stay motivated and then look at who you serve. So let's just say it's your at like someone like me, right? I'm sure that every real estate person has a person. I'm sure that's something that a lot of people will teach who, who your, who's your ideal client. So you look at your ideal client, you need to ask yourself, what do they care about? What are their problems, goals, and needs right now? Because the market will shift. Mm. This is a temporary issue. And, you know, when I'm really good, when I look at what I'm doing today, I'm fine. When I start thinking, what's it going to look like in 90 days, I spiral and I stare at the wall for 45 minutes and completely yeah. and I cool? can't even think. So yeah. I think focusing on each day to be able to say, okay, what are the, make a list of the problems, goals, and needs of your clients right now. So we'll take something really simple. I was just talking to a client they're struggling with the crisis schooling. So what he did is with he went what? crisis schooling, all the schooling. Oh, got it. Okay, sure. Yeah. Homeschooling and all that. Homeschooling, yeah. Yeah, my um, wife. Yeah, we're dealing with that too. And mostly my wife is is do, doing a really a fantastic job with it, by the way. But yeah. I, that's it's, great. Uh, it's different. It's it's hard. So he called three or four teachers he knew and ask them what tips do you have for parents and consolidated those and put those that he's going to do a video on that for all of his friends and family. Right. And that's how he is staying focused and relevant. So what he's going to get is Mm. comments that say, Oh my gosh, that was so helpful. Thank you. 
That's, right? we that's have, brilliant. Just because we're not showing houses doesn't mean we're not showing up as humans. I did a mm. video on my personal page the other day, how to play Pictionary on Zoom. Because my whole career I've managed remote teams. So how do you team build remote teams? So I'm just like, well, this is just Wednesday for me. Like this new world everyone's living sure. in. It's a normal day in the life. It's a normal, yeah, yeah. So I taught, I did a video on how to play Pictionary on Zoom because the kids need to play with their friends. That's a huge issue right now. But what do they play? Mm. They don't talk about their feelings. So now my kids can play Pictionary with their friends. And now we solved the problem of our target market. And so we're showing up and we're staying relevant because we're focused on our actual mission, which is to solve problems for people. So, so the, if, so if somebody's completely only focus is I need to make money and the reality is it's, it's challenging to make money. So right now at this moment, what we're really doing is filling a pipeline, right? We're, right. we're building, we're staying in touch with clients. We're, we're checking in on people. We're having conversations. I'm not even asking people for business right now. If they need something, they're going to tell me, right? I'm just, and it's, it's leading to stuff. But if your only focus is I want to make money, I need to make money. You're not, you're not going to, you're not going to stick it out. But if, like you said, if your focus is, is coming from service problem solving, mm -hmm. um, then you can use these tools like you can call someone and say, hey, I've got some great suggestions for homeschooling. Would you be interested in, in me sharing that with you? Is that, is that what you're talking about? Because it's, it's, a big, it's a higher purpose, right? Yeah, it's how we stay relevant and motivated because then we have stuff to put in our impact journal that's going to keep us right on point. Now, as far as the selling piece, because I'm getting this question a lot. A lot of people mm. are out there saying, don't be salesy, don't be salesy, don't be salesy. And I think we need to take our cues from the restaurant business right now. So the restaurant business has got hit. Well, restaurants are not discounting their food. What they did is they said, okay, crap. I don't know if it's okay if I say that word. Oh, like fine. We've had crap. Gary V on the show. So oh, was, yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> Grant Cardone's going to be on next week. So it's, oh, it's going to be awesome, awesome. explicit. So, <laughs> yeah. so you have all these people that now are not coming to your restaurant. And so what are people doing, right? Mexican food is a great example of this right now. They're taking, they're making pitchers of margaritas, right? Taco platters, a, toy, a roll of toilet paper, and six eggs. And they're packaging it together as a survival kit. And they're delivering. Mm, that's awesome. So what they did is they said, okay, what are the problems, goals, and needs of my people, right? Well, they're stressed out right? They can't go out and run and get margarita mix. Like that's just not a thing we can do anymore, right? There's all these challenges. And so they creatively did that, but then they charged them and they said, you know what, community, we're in business. So as business owners, we're going to find ways to serve you. And I think that that is the idea that we need to take. And so while I think it's both, right? It's okay, David, how are you for reals? Like, how are you feeling? We need to move people out of anxiety and fear by letting them release a little bit. And then we need to move them to hope, right? Is selling your house still a goal of yours? Yes or no? Well, sure. Okay, well, can I tell you what I'm doing with my business right now that is helping my clients? Yeah. And then they'll 100%. say yes or no. And now we have an ethical, non-icky, problem-centered way of saying let's talk about business yeah i love that so i can i want to share an example because a lot most of our listeners are real estate agents so we i built a business on calling expired sellers sellers home you know whose homes came off the market they didn't sell we call and uh, attempt to relist the property and right now a lot of agents aren't calling because like oh my god nobody's gonna list right now i don't know what to say we're just calling and saying, hey, you know, how are you? Um, I noticed your house came off the market. Crazy times, right? Are you guys, how are you guys doing? Are you okay? You, mm -hmm. you safe? You healthy? Awesome. So are you thinking of putting a house back on the market in the future? So we're still contacting yeah. and we're still having conversations. It's just a different approach than, hey, I, I want to interview for the job of selling your house, right? It 100%. It's just connecting with people on a human level. We need to move them. We need to give them hope. Right. In, in any sales, the first thing we do is we sell hope. Yeah. And this is an opportunity for people 
to do that. So we have also have a list of, um, and I call it my coronavirus, um, you know, real estate checklist. Like these are all the change. Like it's an email that's legit, like four pages long. Mm-hmm. And we're just sharing with people and saying, hey, I, we, I, my first is this is a long email, but it's going to help you make the best decisions while this is happening. And so many people appreciate getting that email because it, it's breaking down everything from the home inspection to the, to the yep. mortgage problems. To, you know, every, everything's it. It's, it's awesome. But it's what you said, too. It's, it's, it's um, delivering some value. Mm-hmm. outside of just, hey, do you want to list your house with me today? Or are you ready to buy a house today? Yep. And I, I think the target market has shrunk, right? But the target market will never go to zero. And what happens is our mind, it attaches to stories, right? So the last person we talk to is like, this happened, and this is why I can't list my house. And our mind attaches that and starts applying it to everything. That's why testimonials are so powerful, but mm. negative stories are so impactful and it's hard, they're hard to shake because of what we do with stories in our mind. And so what we have to do is we have to change the story that we believe, right? Because yes, the target market is shrinking with people being unemployed and right, all this stuff, but it, it will never sh- shrink to zero. And like, though the other yeah. part of it is the real estate agents, we're the largest trade organization in the world right now, is going to shrink as well. So as yes, fewer people are going to buy and sell, there's right. going to be a lot less real estate agents as well. So it's a great opportunity really for mm-hmm. the agents that can really stand out. I want to I wanna talk a little bit about um, motivation because something I experienced is um, I have to stay true to my routines if I'm not, and you tell me if this is something you work with your clients on too. We didn't talk about this ahead of time, but if I don't like, I still ha- I stopped getting up early. I started sleeping until seven seven thirty. You know what I mean? Not showering. Yeah. I you know I went like I didn't I didn't shave my head. One of my team members made a comment about it on a Zoom video, um, and <laughs> and I just felt off. You know what I mean? And how yeah. important is that though to continue? Because you said you're used to working remotely. I wasn't. Right. And I'm guessing most of the people listening to this aren't either yeah. or weren't. Now, I think a lot of us are getting used to it. How important mm-hmm. are those routines? Is that something that you, you coach on and talk about? Oh, as yeah. Well? Yeah, for sure. So we have a lot, like we have this thing that feels new, a pandemic, but it actually, all it does is it creates a bunch of little things. They're just all happening at the same time. And what I've encouraged people to do is let's stop focusing on what's changed and let's focus on what's the same. What's the same is showering in the morning before work is a good idea. What's the same, right? Exercising increases our brain power and our happiness levels, right? What's the same personalized interactions will convert the highest. What's the same? We solve problems. So the more we can focus on um, doing what we already know and what's the same, right? We can ha- we have some sort of base for all of this. So I mean, a hundred percent, as much as you can keep your routines. And so what that means, I think, for parents right now, is some of the routines are after the kids go to school at eight o'clock. Well, we're going to have to shift like that normalcy. We need to make mm-hmm. sure that we guard that with our children. So let's say that that was the thing. You'd get your kids, you'd take them to school, and then you'd kind of start your morning routine. I think that transparency with your family is so critical. We, my kids are seven and nine. Uh, they do attend online school. So again, not too much disruption for us, but they've always had full access to my Google calendar. We have a, a whiteboard out in the room, like a huge four by six weekly whiteboard that says where at, what everything's going on. So they know, right, when I'm working, when I'm not working, and I think we just, we, need, we can teach our family to honor our routines. Mm. And that's the break that I'm seeing. Um, that's what we're seeing is just the really, really hard right now is that things are disruptive. And so uh, the parents, adults, right? They're setting aside their own routines in order to serve their kids, which makes sense, except we have to put our own oxygen mask on first. And you have to ask yourself, okay, what are the, what is my oxygen mask? And you have to guard that oxygen mask or you can't help anyone. You can't serve Mm. your clients. You can't serve your business. For me, my kids know, I mean, this is our livelihood as my business. So 
like we have to guard, we have to guard it because yeah, that's great. I can play cards with you because you're bored, but you were going to have some bigger issues if I can't right. Take care of what I need to take care of as your parent. Sure. Um, and so I think the routines are critical and I think that we can have conversations. I think our kids understand so much more than we give them credit for. Yeah. Right. Everyone feels like they have to run. A lot of people feel like they have to run around and appease them. I think our kids, we can say, you know what? I get really, really cranky when I don't have coffee before I talk to you. Yeah. Do you, do you see that? And they're like, I see that. I, do you want me to be cranky? I do not want you to be cranky. Then you need me. You need to let me. Right. Like we need to do it. Use yeah. our sales skills, friends. Sure. Right. I can have my coffee and I can work out and then I can play cards with you or whatever, or I can play cards with you super cranky and we can get in a fight. Yeah. Well, I don't, my, my, my three-year-old is probably not going to be that reasonable, but I, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Well, um, hey, school age, yeah. right? I mean, the toddlers yeah. are all around yeah. at school age. Ab- absolutely. And so, and, and all right. So I, listen, I appreciate you. Um, you know, you had uh, shared with me when you uh, first, when, you know, when you sent me your, uh, questions uh, about you know your thoughts about mastery. So what when you when you think about mastery, um, talk to us. What is what does that mean to you? Um, to me, mastery looks like skill development. Um, it looks like right. Are we is pursuing excellence versus perfection? I think there's a difference. Excellence is other centered. Perfection is ego centered. And I think we can get that wrong, right? We can try to be perfect and it really doesn't serve people. And so I think it's pursuing excellence. But when you look at any business, you have to break it down into individual skills, not just, am I good at real estate? Well, I mean, are you good at this individual time management? Are you, what about this particular skill, connecting with people, referral generation, um, you know, building rapport, right? Moving people out of indecision. Mm. we can hem and haw all day right but like those are all individual skills what we do with our clients is we take the individual skills for their business and we rate them is is zero you've never done it number one would be i tried and i stink two is like proficient and three is i'm a rock star i could run training at it and each one is different so you could be great at connecting but horrible at time management well so you're three over here but maybe you've never even had a planner like you just refused. No one ever taught you that. So you're a zero. I've never actually tried time management. Um, and so what we do, I think what's really, really important is to break it down individually and then pursue mastery in each individual component. I think that that helps a lot because that builds our confidence when we move from, oh my gosh, I was more productive, for example, this week than I was last week. Now we have a, a spark of motivation. But all of it comes down to tracking wins I mean, I work with, um, and this isn't like a, a braggy, like name dropping type thing, but I work with million dollar business owners. Name dropping. <laughs> yeah. You did some name dropping, but <laughs> I love name dropping. it's your show. It's all good. So you yeah. Get to. Thank you. It's all good. So I have a couple of clients that make, um, over a million dollars a year and you know, the thing that they never remember is what did they do? What created success? Hmm. I'm like, you make a million dollars. How did you become so successful? I just showed up and I'm like, oh, that's terrible. And so what happens is you see a confidence issue and a motivation issue because they never actually figured out what made them successful. And so it takes someone like me. Oh, God. We could do another whole podcast on this because as soon as you said that, I said, that makes sense. I just show up. But I I do. I always show up. I show up when everybody else doesn't show up. Well, but sure. And that's, that's part of it. And I keep but it's showing deeper up. Than that. But it's so much deeper than that because I have this particular client I'm thinking of. The way she casts vision is at a skill level I could never touch. Mm. Or I'm a path builder. She's a vision caster. I mean, a vision caster. And so, but to her, it's just breathing. Um, I call this, it's called leadership superpower. We do coaching on this. But um, once you know what you're good at and you add more skill to it, your motivation goes through the roof. So when I started coaching with her a year ago, she had taken a four year break from her business four years off and was like, I'm not motivated. And now she's just like crushing everything because she knows who she is, what she's good at. And all we're doing is we're keeping on adding strategy 
to that. And so she's like, I can do this. I know what to do. And I, the reason I bring up her income level is because I think we all have this assumption that everyone other than me has it together. But this is why I think it still comes down to the simple thing of impact journal. And that's not like a girl thing or a guy thing. It's just, if you write down, you'll start to see, oh my gosh, I am really good at cold calling. I love that. Right? I I'm really, some- like, you'll say, I called this list and I got two people that were excited. And you start to track it and you look back, you're like, I am freaking amazing at cold calling. I know this just from talking to you. See, that's the win right now. And it, it may not be that this person said they're going to list their house with me today, but it's that I got these two people's information and we made a connection and we can talk a month and a half or two months from now again. Yep. That is a big win today, which I think a lot of people need to understand. Absolutely. And you gain motivation right? From, from log, I guess, logging the mastery, right? And you'll see improvements. Yeah, absolutely. So well, hey, this, this, this was uh, super fun with you. I, I don't, I don't, don't want to cut you off. Uh, um, so let me, so there was a question. I say, what, I have a question. What is the question you want to make sure I ask? So uh, how can people stay motivated on a day-to-day basis to create uh, the big wins over time? The big wins. So uh, brainstorm a list problems, goals, and needs of your target market. Mm-hmm. Um, work so a lot of stuff we talked about. Day to solve them. And every time you solve a problem, help someone meet a goal or address a need, write it down, track it, right? You will have more motivation each day and it will operate like an avalanche of motivation. Uh, just don't stop when you're in a good space. Don't stop. You'll lose it. It's basically motivation momentum and it works with every single person I've ever worked with without fail, which you can't really say that. You can't really say that about a lot of things. There's a lot of things, but it works most of the time. I've, I've never had an experience where someone's done this for 30 days and they haven't seen an improvement in motivation and it usually falls off when they stop. So that, that would be my number one, like kind of to wrap up our whole conversation which is awesome. We could probably talk for days. Yeah, I I can do this for, yeah, 30 days. But as I mentioned earlier, I got a lot of things going on right now uh, with my my life and my business. It's super exciting and uh, to be determined. You guys will all hear some big announcements soon. Um, That said, I mean, so we talked about, you know, being a problem solver, right? First Mm -hmm. and foremost, you want to come at this from being a problem solver, uh, the concept of hope. You're bringing hope to people, right? Um, You also talked about, like, I don't know if you said your superpower. I love, you know, helping people figure out what is your superpower? What are you really good at? What do you enjoy doing? What would you do for free even if you weren't getting paid, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, that's, that's. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's a whole nother podcast. Sure. That was Um, a fun one. Routines. um, I love the video idea too, sharing like those, the. The Zoom, or the, are you doing that as a Zoom meeting, like a Zoom meeting for people, like tips for homeschooling, stuff like that? Or? Uh, that was what a client was just getting, not a Zoom meeting, but just a video, like Facebook a Live. Video. Okay. Yeah, All right, cool. I, coincidentally, I was talking to somebody earlier today that's doing some type of a, a similar Zoom meeting for different, he's trying to get a, a bunch of people on. He's going to have a panel of people talking, you know, teachers. It's very similar to uh, mm-hmm. like a uh, K through one teachers yeah. talking about some of the things they can do. And then he's going to open it up and, and people can ask him questions for, with, with regards to homeschooling. Right. I had an idea for a uh, virtual golf tournament. I want to figure out how, how to do that. I think that would be so cool. That would um, be cool. Yeah. I'm trying to figure that out. So yeah, there's so many good things going on. And listen, I appreciate you being here. I mean, if you, if, if you break this down, um, and you say there's, you know, you just want everybody listening to this to walk away from this with one thing. Well, before I even get to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to extend a little bit. What would you say is the biggest challenge you're seeing right now with salespeople? Oh, uh, they're getting caught in fear and anxiety, and so then they're just not moving into action. They're afraid of offending people or being mm. inappropriate. So they're, um, they're really in self-preservation mode. Uh, as opposed to how can I, like, what are your problems and how can I solve them? There's a missing piece. They're, we're just looking for how can I solve, pro- solve, right? Make sales. So there's a little bit of, you know, the fight, flight, and freeze, 
right? When we run into stress, there's a lot of freeze and a lot of flight yeah. right now. So if you're, if people are coming at this with a, Hey, I just want to solve problems. You're not going to have call reluctance because you're going to want to call and check in on people and see what, what issues they have and how can you solve them? Right. That's, and that's prospecting one one to be honest with you. That's, it's nothing it's, new. It's no, it's no different than what we would have done six weeks ago. Yeah. Forget. Well, okay. So what would you say in wrapping up, um, uh, Tasha, what would you say would be the one thing you want everybody to really walk away from? Let's say they, they didn't take notes. They didn't even pay a ton of attention, but they just hear this, this particular moment of the podcast. What's the one thing you want them to walk away from this interview with? Um, I want them to focus on positively impacting three people per day with something they do in their business. And I want to encourage them that you will get through this if you do that. And you'll come out on the other side. You'll, you'll be okay. It's going, it will be okay. This is not the first big challenge our world has ever experienced. Um, and what we and to focus on today, the three people today, not the three people tomorrow or not in 60 days. I love it. Awesome. Brilliant. How do, how do people get in touch with you? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a cheat sheet or a download on all the things that we had, because in case they weren't able to take notes, I know podcasts. Sure. So I'm going to put that on EmergeSalesTraining.com slash Path to Mastery. Um, and you guys are welcome to download that. Uh, also, you can just shoot me an email at Tasha at EmergeSalesTraining.com. I'm glad to connect with anyone um, on whatever sales challenges you might be having in your business. Well, thank you. I appreciate you today. I feel like you did bring a lot of value to our listeners. So I just want to thank you for that. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. I loved it. Masters, hey, before you jump on to what's next, I just want to thank you for checking out the show. And if you like what you heard, please give me a review on iTunes. It helps tremendously. It helps us get guests. And it's I just so appreciate it. Uh, And if you want, send me an email and I will read your review right here on the podcast. Email me, david at davidihill.com. Again, I want to thank you. Uh, Check out our sponsors. I appreciate our sponsors. Without them, we can't do this. Vulcan7.com for your expired physicals, all that stuff. CRM, uh, Vulcan7.com forward slash path to mastery again david's free book get yourself a free audiobook in health and nutrition you know is number one to me uh, so check out advocare products which are tremendous products as a matter of fact patrick mahomes uses the products so go to live longer smarter Dot com. Again, live longer, smarter.com to check out health and nutrition products. My friends, again, I appreciate you listening to the show. You rock. <laughs>